Hi everybody and welcome to the second episode of Vox Res. In today's video we're going to be taking a closer look at the rather rattly Astra engine and seeing if we can diagnose the fault with it. So first thing we need to do to start removing this uh, coil pack is to remove the cover. It simply picks up at the uh, right hand side of the engine and you can just peel it off, just clip it off. Next we need to remove the coil pack itself. There's two bolts holding this on, uh, two Torx bolts. Uh, they also clamp down the um, rocker cover as well. They're not very tight so you should just be able to loosen those off quite easily. Um, and then undo them by hand. So once we've got those out of the way, there is a little electrical connector. We're going to the right hand side of the engine bay with a rocker cover. Um, it's just tucked underneath the wiring loom a little bit. There's a little clip to push down, which you can see there. Just push the little clip down and it will pull out. And once that's done, you can just simply tug on the coil pack and remove it from the vehicle. So once the coil pack's removed, next thing to do is to take a spark plug out. Probably best to start with number one cylinder and that's normally at the crankshaft, pulley, timing belt end of the engine. and then replace the spark plug with the compression tester. Now, there's a little bit of a fiddle to get this down into the hole there because the, the spark plug hole is quite a long way down uh, inside the bottom of the engine. Um, but once you do get it started and get it in there, it's just uh, screw it in finger tight. Um, if you want me to do, give a little bit more details on the compression tester, um, I can do that in a separate video. Just leave a comment down below. And I'll try and get that done for you. Um, but basically, it just screws in. There's a little button on the side there that you might be able to see in the video, and um, you press to release the pressure. So you need to remember to do that every time you take a test. So we need to crank the engine over now for between 10 and 15 seconds, maybe up to 20. Um, I'd like to point out at this point, I have removed the uh, fuel pump fuse um, because we don't want to be pumping neat fuel down into the cylinders and washing all the oil away. So we'll give that a crank over. And then we look at the measurement on the gauge, the reading on the gauge, and we can see there we've got a reading of about 170 PSI. So we'll check that against the specs in a little bit. Uh, so once finished on the first cylinder, just remove the gauge. Put it somewhere safe so it doesn't fall on the floor and smash. And then just replace the spark plug. Doesn't need to be tightened up too much. Just nipped up tight to make a seal. And then basically it's a case of repeating this on the other three cylinders.
So that's the compression test complete on all four cylinders. As you can see, uh, cylinders one and two are identical at around 170 PSI. Cylinder three is quite a bit down at 150, and cylinder four is quite a bit up compared to one and two at around the 178 mark. Um, now I've looked up specification, and the compression should be between 12 and 14 bar. Now I've converted that to PSI, that works out to be 174 to 203. So we can see that all three cylinders, or three of the cylinders, one, two, and three, are all out of spec. One and two are just about there, 170 should be 174. Quite a high mileage engine, possibly let that one go. Cylinder three is well down, so it looks like we've got a problem, probably with piston rings there. Um, and cylinder four is the only one that's actually within spec and even that's a little bit on the lower side 175 178-ish ish um, minimum is 174 So um, looks like we have got a bit of a problem with uh, with piston ring wear there and on uneven compressions that might explain um, The misfire with the vehicle. It's got a little bit of hesitation um, But anyway, let's get on and remove the cam cover and see what's going on under there so here we are back under the bonnet of the Astra. Uh, first thing to do to get this uh, cam cover off is to take off the air intake pipe work. There's one Jubilee clip here which uh, just unscrews, you just slide that loose, just loosen it off. Um, and there should be another one just down here. However, it's missing on this vehicle, so this has obviously been off before. Little wiggle and it just pulls off. There's a little uh, plug there that needs to be unplugged, little connector on the mass airflow sensor got a similar clip to the one we saw on the uh, coil pack that's the mass airflow sensor there where the plug plugs into and that's a little connector <clears throat> so once that's uh, removed put it somewhere safe next thing to do is to take off the upper timing belt cover um, which is this bit of plastic here it's held on with two Torx bolts um, comes off with a little female Torx socket like that can't remember the size um, like with anything guys, if you've got any uh, requests for more detailed information on this, just drop a comment down below um, and I'll do my best to find the information and answer it, answer the questions for you. Um, <clears throat> so these aren't very tight, um, just sort of just over hand tight really, um, they come out quite easily. So just remove both of those screws, or bolts rather, and there we have one of the little Torx bolts probably an M8 or something and about 20 mil long, 25 mil long. Whip both of those out. And then the cover just slides off, pulls forward to free it from the, the cam cover and it just slides out of place. A quick inspection of the cam belt, it doesn't look too bad in there, um, not too much dust, no signs of cracking on the belt, no signs of wear, um, so I'm happy to run the engine with that belt in, obviously before we start using the car properly on the road we will be changing the cam belt, um, we'll do another video on that. So next thing to do is to remove the wiring loom from around the top of the, around from the outside of the cam cover. Um, a little bit tricky to get off the cables are quite tight there's not a lot of wiggle room there <coughs> excuse me um, but you can just slide it off it just slides off some little pegs on the uh, 
uh, timing cover itself. So there's nine bolts, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one in the middle, nine. Um, obviously there's also the two bolts that held the uh, coil pack in, so if you haven't, re if you haven't already removed the coil, coil pack like we have, then um, obviously you'll need to do that. So again, these bolts aren't very tight. I think they torque down to something like, I think it's about seven Newton meters or something. So uh, they're not that tight, <clears throat> not that hard to get out. Um, but just bear in mind that they are captive in the rocker cover. Um, and by that I mean um, they don't actually come out of the cover. Um, now there's also a little pipe, a little breather pipe that goes from the rocker cover down to the inlet manifold. And that's got a tiny little spring clip on it. Um, a pair of long nose pliers or a little screwdriver and you can just pick that up. Just be careful that it doesn't ping out. Um, I have had them ping out and then you end up looking all around the engine bay, going around it with a magnet and underneath the car trying to find it. Um, so once that's unclipped you can just pull the pipe out. So that's the pipe um, and if you look on the end there, there's the little spring clip. It's a little clip there, I've got part of my glove stuck in it there, but that's the little clip and that just snaps back into place and then you can just push that back on to the uh, valve cover, rocker cover, when you come to reassemble it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to loosen off all the bolts, make sure they're all loose, now I've cracked them all off and just quickly un undo all of those. Like I say, they are capped. If they don't come out of the rocker cover, um, they are just um, captivated in there. So what you want to do is just make sure that they are all free and are loose. You can do that just by getting your finger under them or a little screwdriver under them and just lifting them and you can feel whether they're actually still screwed into uh, any of the threads in the cylinder head or whether they are just in fact um, uh, loose in the in the rocker cover itself. It's like with anything like this, just take your time, be methodical. Now this bolt is really seized in here um, and as we're unscrewing it, unfortunately the head has snapped off um, so we're going to have to remove that bolt somehow. Um, hopefully it won't be taking the head off and getting it drilled out and re-tapped. Uh, the reason that one's come off, I think it's broken off like that, is because it's a it's an open hole. It's open to the elements, whereas all the others are blind holes. They, there's no they don't go through the, the head, whereas that one goes through the edge of the head. And I think it's got corroded on the bottom, um, despite liberal applications of WD-40. Um, it refused to come undone and just sheared off. So now we've got to pull this cover off. Now I don't think this has been off here for years by the looks of it, or if ever in its lifetime, because it is stuck solid. I'm just checking all the bolts are loosened off properly. I think, no, I think they are, but it's just so tight on there to get off. It just does not want to budge. Give it a bit of clean up on the front surface, trying to see um, where the gap between the, the plastic cover and the cylinder head is because it's so full of crud and dirt there. Resort to giving it a light tap with a mallet, just a, a soft rubber mallet, just to see if we can break the seal. Um, but unfortunately you can only really get on one edge of it because there's too much stuff in the way, so we we'll try pulling it out um, from the rocker. I mean, you see how tight on there it is, it's actually rocking the engine checking all the bolts are out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lever it off uh, with a screwdriver. Now you've got to be very careful because you don't want to damage the mating surfaces otherwise the gasket won't seal um, and you will end up with oil leaking out everywhere. So eventually we get it free. It is a little bit tricky to manoeuvre out. Um, obviously this one's stuck on really hard so it's making life a bit harder. Um, but there are some little bits at the end at the cam, uh, sorry at the timing belt end um, that go under the inner back plate or the back plate for the timing belt cover um, so it's a little bit of a wiggle to get them out there plus you've got to try and get them out of those behind that wiring from behind that wiring loom like I say just take your time um, don't force anything don't break anything just be gentle see where where it might be catching what it might be stuck on and uh, with a little bit of perseverance you should be able to get this 
Oh, I was going to say easily then, but it's definitely not easy. Um, but I say, I don't think it's been off the car ever, probably, and it's, it's well stuck on there. And you can see now how that the gasket is actually stuck to the uh, to the top of the cylinder head. So at least we've got it off now. Um, we have a quick look in it um, up the top right hand side there is the little breather valve these diaphragms split up there you can get new ones for them so we might get a new one or we might just bin that cover um, and get another one it is, has got a lot of crud on it you can't really see it too well in the in the photograph there in the video there um, but it is full of crud so now i'm having a little look around the engine inside the uh, the cylinder head under the rocker cover and it's just full of bits of carbon I thought they were bits of broken metal to start with, but they're not. They're actually bits of carbon and burnt oil. Um, as you can see, there's just loads of it in there. Um, lots of sticky sludge. Um, at this point, I'm a little bit amazed at how filthy this engine is. I've never seen one in quite this bad a state. Um, it probably had a few oil changes when it was new, um, but I don't think it's had a service for years. I've got some quite a lot of paperwork with it. Um, and it's been in the garage for this misfire problem that it's got um, it's had a new coil pack fitted and new spark plugs fitted which I can see are actually new components I think said that done in the last year even more bits of carbon and crud there that we're picking out it's just solid lumps of stuff I'm a little bit concerned at this point um, <clears throat> about dropping them down the oil way, oil ways, oil ways and bunging things up even more um, so yeah, as I was saying about the paperwork, so it says on there, recommend service, recommend service, recommend service. about three times it's been in the garage for a misfire, um, but there's no evidence of it ever being serviced. So I don't think this has had an oil change for probably 60, 70,000 miles. It's absolutely filthy in here. Um, While well, I've got the cover off, just have a quick inspection of the camshafts. Um, they look okay. Um, looking at the cam lobes, doesn't appear to be any corrosion or any wear or pitting on there, which is quite good news. Um, picking out even more crud here, it's just unbelievable how much muck there is inside that engine. Um, it's quite concerning. There's another big lump of sludge there. Um, so yeah, it's pretty grim inside here. So everyone's about all we've got time for in this episode. Um, what we found is we've got a rather badly looked after Vauxhall Lastra 1.6 uh, engine. Lots of dirt in the cam cover there, uh, lots of carbon build up and obviously we've got the compression issue. It's low on all of the cylinders and particularly low on one of them. Uh, so we'll need to do a little bit more investigation in that. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe down below, comment if you've got anything you want to ask, anything you want to say, please feel free to do that. I'll try and get back to you all as soon as I can. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe um, what I'm planning to do is hopefully upload a new video every Sunday um, so look out for that click the notification button bell thing down the bottom um, and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>